Hello and welcome back to another show. I'm Sid and in today's video I'm going to be going over iris tracking in Spark AR Studio. Uh, all the links to everything I'm using will be in the description below including this iris.fbx file. So before you ask, check. Uh, if you're new here and you enjoy the content that you're getting, uh, maybe consider subscribing because I just hit 49 and when I pass 50 that would be pretty cool. So uh, yeah, with that being said, let's get straight into the video. I'm going to pause this open up a new project and show you how it was done. I'll switch over to this camera again. Sorry I was gone for so long, I hope you didn't miss me. Uh, so now, what we're, first thing we're going to do is add a face tracker to our scene, uh, and inside of that, a face mesh. Hi, look at me, I'm all meshy. Uh, we'll add a material layer to that, and we'll rename both of these to invisible, because for the purpose of this, we don't actually need them to be seen. They just need to be there as a kind of occluder for the eyes that we're putting behind them. So that when the person blinks, you see the irises, uh, the eyelids, sorry, are closing on this. That's what we want, is for them to be behind these closing eyelids. So when we reduce the opacity, we're not going all the way down to zero. We're actually just going to go to one. That way, the blink is slightly there, and we can just adjust it to our needs. And then we're going to leave this as it is. So after this, we're going to import the iris.fbx file. Now this includes a 3D model, uh, which is the iris itself, and this material property, uh, material which you can adjust the properties of. So, for example, you can change the color, but it's not visible yet. So let's add it to our scene. Face tracker puts it right at zero zero, which is the center of my nose. Uh, now we can adjust the color a little bit and make it more visible. Bright white. Hello. Cool. So now we've got this and it's up here and this is included inside of it uh, yep and we're gonna add our snake eye texture hi quick tip from me in the future while you're uh, adjusting your textures make sure to under compression and manual compression hit this check mark to ensure no compression when you export to devices that way you'll prevent blurry images back to you me so up here under texture file, you can adjust it. You can change it to this new snake one. And now we have our snake eye. So coming up to the iris itself, we can uh, right, uh, sorry, not right click. Just click on these two little arrows here. It'll open up our patch editor. And both of these will be now inside of our scene. Sorry, I haven't made a video in a couple of days. <laughs> I'm a little out of practice. So the next thing you want to do is come up to our face tracker and drag this from our scene directly into our patch editor and it will create these three patches. Create a little bit of space between what we've already got. You don't really need to adjust these. You know what I find with a patch editor, just as a side note, that they always come in and they're always in the way or the lines are weirdly apart. Like they're never connected in a way that's efficient, just nice and you know what I mean? But hey, that's, that's just my personal gripe. Anyway. So the next thing you want to do is, from the end of this face tracker patch that we've got, we're going to drag out and we're going to add an eyeball. If you search for eyeball, add that, brilliant. Now we've got even more options and we're going to connect some of these up with our irises. So the first one we're going to have is left iris position connected to our 3D position. And now you see it's tracking onto my eye, my left eye according to the reversed Instagram camera. And we're going to do the same thing for rotation so that it works even when I track around and you can see it kind of working now. So the next thing we're going to do is come back up to our iris and this one which we haven't got included, scale, we're going to adjust slightly so that it's a little bit smaller because we don't want it to take up the full eye, we just want it to fit inside of like the coloured iris part which it kind of does pretty good. But you'll see we still have that issue of blinking so we're going to fix that by coming up to our mask here and if I zoom in a little bit and pause the screen while looking into the camera then I can now adjust this pulling it slightly forwards or backwards just until it occludes those edges and now when I come back in you'll see that the blink is much more effective it's still not perfect, 
and you have to work on it a little bit to get it perfect you can even uh, adjust the z-axis yourself or come in here and adjust like different things but I wouldn't really recommend it too much this is probably the most uh, unless you unless you're like like more advanced and this is kind of just a, a brief how to I'm not I'm not really sure what anyone's watching these to be honest I'm learning as much as you are but yeah so we've got that and now if you want to duplicate that and have it on both eyes we'll rename we'll rename uh, we'll just sorry duplicate this so now we have two of them and the first one we can name left eye and this one we can name right eye and we'll do the exact same thing we'll just add these into our scene because we duplicated it it's already scaled down so we'll just add the position and the rotation and we'll connect those up here to the right eye position and the right iris rotation and now we have both of them already set up the this one is duplicated this one so you've already set everything up to the blink and the scale and yeah that's pretty much the entire effect there's not much to it it's quite simple but you can then add any image you want so we can change this if we wanted to the eight ball and now I have eight ball eyes so you know we can even uh, bring it back over here and come over to standard that will take this and move it into its own material layer but now we can adjust the uh, specular rage smoothness we can have really shiny or like not quite reflect we can add all kinds of stuff you can come in and like once you have this this core technique down you can really add anything in here you probably add a little animation if you're familiar with those uh, like a looping animation or something I don't know uh, let me know what you think of this video in the comments below whether it was helpful uh, like I said at the beginning I hit 49 subscribers I'm about to pass 50 so any help would be greatly appreciated uh, yeah I guess I'll see you next time I'll try and make more videos soon peace